Okay, so I thought just by time I uh, posted something um, to show you all where I am at the moment. Um, for those who haven't been following the um, RC Groups build, will um, know that I've tried um, casting a section, did a test section casting um, using the Form 1 um, SLA printer um, to print a uh, a core and a cavity. Now the, the printer was playing up at the time, um, but it was it was the, the quality of the print um, was good enough for me actually to uh, prove um, that the um, concept works. Okay, so um, same again. We've got core and a cavity, um, and we are printed in clear purposely because um, I was really keen to see what happens to be able to see um, the expanded foam, the urethane foam actually expanding and where it moved within the mould um, as I cast it. And that, from that perspective that worked really well. Um, downside of using clay for the, um, the mould is it's actually quite difficult to finish. Because um, it's clay you can't really see where the defects are. Um, so, what I, so if I do um, do moulds in using the SLA printer I'll use a grey resin for the cavity part and then I'll use a clear resin for the core part and all that means is when I pour the resin in um, and let it go off um, I can see exactly what's happening and it's really reassuring to know that you know everything's covered well and yeah, there's no major issues so that's definitely a, a, a huge benefit um, when you actually come to casting now as I said before um, I will be using <coughs> a clear a um, grey, sorry, a grey mould um, for the cavity now, and this is the uh, Form Labs um, grey. Again, it's not the best of prints, um, but again, good enough to uh, prove the concept. So I just printed a a grey ca core, a cavity, sorry, and I just used the same core and everything fits good. So the sort of tolerances and the repeatability on the Form One um, are actually very good. And then instead of casting doing another cast, messy cast. I just offered in the part I cast on this one with the clear resin and as you can see it fits um, nearly perfectly, you know, within within reason. It all fits together good. So it's a nice uh, <laughs> nice way to test a, a mould to make sure um, it's not warped or distorted. Just get a cast, a previously cast part um, printed in the new printed mould um, and it fits both. So even though it was actually cast in this one, I printed this one and finished this one, and as you can see, it fits. It's great. So um, maybe on for that. Uh, as some of you know, I was having a huge amount of problems with the um, Form Lamps uh, printer, um, and our feeling is it's um, laser related. Um, it's just been returned to me after having a new laser fitted and I haven't actually had time to, to test it. So um, rather than hang around, because it was like three weeks, just over three weeks, I think it was away for this time, um, I made a start um, and printed the moulds with the um, filament fused fabrication FFM printer, um, which is this, this mould here. So let me just zoom out. And yeah, got a bit of a fright when I first uh, put all the, the bits together because the, the size of it, you know, it's uh, fairly big. So this is the left hand um, fuselage side. Um, I printed, I've modified my printer some more, removed the um, one of the extruders because it's a dual extruder printer. So I removed one of the extruders. Um, to reduce the weight on the carriage and that helps with ringing um, to get better quality of print but it also um, allowed me to take the fan um, that was used to cool the um, the cooling block on that side of the head and actually mount it on top so it's these like two fans um, in effect co um, cooling the cooling block um, and that then allowed me to um, run my chamber the print chamber at a higher temperature and I um, Got a fan, uh, sorry, a hair dryer. I took the guts out of the hair dryer and fitted it into a, some ducting um, to try and keep the um, the build chamber at a, at a constant temperature, and that re that's really really helped. Um, not many um, cracks um, in it, um, and very very straight, uh, so no warping as such. Um, so that was a, a real win, um, straight off the bat. Um, 
so yeah, I'm still I'm still refining uh, my, my print settings, um, but yeah, a lot better. So the, obviously the, the right hand side is, again is going to be a better mold um, than the left hand side because I've learned uh, with the left hand side, and what I've learned I've then passed on to the right hand side. So um, cast this on uh, when was it? Uh, Friday, Thursday night. Might have been Friday yesterday, um, and I changed my um, release. So schedule as it were uh, a little bit where I um, instead of just using the um, I think it's oh, I can't remember what release I'm using uh, I think it's Ease release uh, from uh, Smooth On um, it's like very waxy so I, I polished up the the molds finished the molds same as I did with the wings and then after that I uh, polished them with beeswax then uh, brushed on the um, release um, that they recommend for the urethane foam. Um, and then after that, I added another process where I sprayed um, on PVA um, as a final coat. And I was really keen to use PVA um, more as a barrier um, to stop the, the wax of the mould getting onto the um, cast parts. Um, and that just means it's really, really clean. So when we paint it, we know that um, the paint should key into the, the foam a lot nicer. When I painted the wings, um, I, uh, you may recall that you know I just scuff up the, the surface a bit to get to the key even after cleaning um, the wings down with um, alcohol so um, that worked great and it actually really really aided in the release I mean this was the first this is the first uh, cast out the mold um, and I put some photographs on the RC groups um, very exciting really exciting about this because the potential now is huge because I know it works um, so with this mold, I um, going back to the mold the way I designed the mold. I've designed it with a this top art piece. Um, there's actually I'm sure there's a technical name for these. Um, I don't know whether they're called standoffs or um, they're parts of an injection mold that can be removed to aid the release of the the part. And it was a design fault on my part where I actually had an undercut, a big undercut underneath this top hatch. So obviously I wouldn't be able to get the um, the part out. Um, so I need to pull this part off first and then bring it out. Um, so although um, it was a bit of a pain in the ass, I actually learned a lot about mold design and how to, to overcome that problem and how to design a part like this, a piece into the, the mold and it's very easy, um, very very easy. So um, I should be using that technique a lot more and then I'll use that technique again with the um, then what we call this, where the wing comes into the fuselage, like a saddle sort of thing, because um, I'm quite keen to have that removed, so then I can work on the um, the fuselage side inside the mould, supporting so supported as sort of jigged in the mould, and then I can fit the ducting and um, etc. in there. Um, my I left a, I sort of set up a bit of a too big a, a gap. Um, if you see there, they they're a little bit sloppy these pieces, um, and for the first. Um, Casting. I just got some plasticine and just um, pushed some plasticine into the gap. It worked, yeah, um, but um, yeah, um, I'll be changing that. What I'll do is I'll just put some filler on this and let's try and um, put some filler on, on this piece here and then squeeze it in there and then let it go off and hopefully get this 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 this, this a bit of a crack um, in here, uh, more of a hairline. Um, not a huge issue, but I know if I'm casting a lot of these, just the time spent putting plasticine or, or I, I think you could use um, like a grout, you know, like a, a chalking compound, you know, um, they use chalking, I think it's called, you know, when you're decorating, you could just probably squeeze some of that in there, wipe it off and let it go off. But um, I think my first start will be to actually just clean the wax off this, put some filler on it and get this, this crack um, as hairline as possible. Um, whether I need it, need that to be removable or not it's, it's, yeah it's it's not going to hurt at the moment and only time will tell when i come to put everything uh, everything together so yeah so these parts are a little bit gappy like i say so i'll, I'll fill fill the gaps um and make it a nice tight fit um, for future and this top bit just screws in um there um the other side although i did actually put positions uh for screws to go in there um, here, here and here. Um, in the end I just got some tape and taped it and just held on fine. And obviously when I squeeze that all together, um, in the, like a sandwich with the uh, MDF boards and the clamps and that, everything, it's not going anywhere. But this piece tends to wobble around a little bit so that's fixed in there just with some um, soft tappers. It works perfect. 
Okay, so the um, pass cut, the, the actual pipe cast really, really well. Um, the only sort of problem, if, you know, you call it a problem, is that um, some of the um, PVA um, must have lifted off the surface. Because um, remember, I, I had I polished the wax like a beeswax on here, and then I put another this waxy. Uh, give me five seconds. I'll just get the thing. No, it's not here. It's all down the house. Oh, I think it's ease release. Something like ease release. Um, and there's a number on it. Um, and it's you paint it on it. It's a very, very waxy finish. Um, and I think what happened is it's sort of working too well. And I think the PVA sort of lifted slightly when I was putting everything together off the surface. And then the actual foam actually got underneath it. So this is sort of underneath the layer as it were and won't wash off like all the all the rest washed off really really easily um, hasn't affected the surface quality at all um, smooth still smooth um, this piece had a few more bubbles in um, than normal um, and, and I did actually rush the, the pouring of this because I what I found is actually getting the um, the two-part urethane up to the correct um, temperatures about 23 and a half degrees I recommend you use it at it's really really important and it makes a huge difference in the consistency of the the final foam so um, yeah I mix it up and I mix perfect you sort of a perfect amount and literally I just poured it in there <laughs> yeah and up the tail and I tried to pour some on um, the core bit you know, just around where I knew that it needed more material but you know as soon as I finished and scraped it was starting to foam up and I thought no just close it cross my fingers and, and see what we get and it did you know imagine the foam just set, settled down here as I closed it um, and squeezed it it just squeezed to where it needed to go really um, so yeah I think something like this these, these big bubbles which aren't really a problem because they, they they still got a skin over them and all they're going to do really is lighten the, the final product um, but sometimes there's a bit of pressure in the bubble and um, it presses up and you can't really notice it so much when it's white but if you were to prime this you'll see little bubbles like blisters I suppose um, so what I've been doing is just poking with the pin to let the pressure out and they seem to go, go taut so um, it may be something that we just need to live with um, and we can fill those if we, it really bothers us um, later on in the day um, another thing that some of the guys on the um, forum uh, have um, suggested is um, actually priming the mould um, which I think might actually really help with this this bubbling situation. So you won't actually see the bubble, and we'll have a, a prime surface, which should be the, the sort of the main surface. Um, the other nice thing about the PVA I, I was thinking about is if you actually left the PVA blue coating on, because um, it sticks on there quite well, you go wash it off. Um, it means that you can go through the whole build um, without your greasy fingers getting all over your foam. Uh, so when you come to finally paint it or prime it, paint it, um, it's going to be nice and clean. So you just wash it off and then paint it and it'll be perfect. So yeah, so I learned a lot just using the PVA. So that was great. Um, other things, yeah, so as I said, the um, saddle. Um, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a bit better. Okay, so I purposely designed it so this bit comes out so I can work on the, the model like that. Um, see what I mean? So I'll have the ducting coming through here and I can actually get the wing on there as well inside with, with the mold on. So it's, yeah, whether I need it or not, I don't know until I actually start putting it to, to, together. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just run through um, a dry fit of the parts that I've got, um, just to see how everything's fitting. Um, so first, I'll start off with what should we start off with? Let's start off with the canopy. So we've got the canopy here. Now I cast these parts oh, must be about six months ago. Um, so they, they were done with different filament. Um, different time the printer wasn't set up the same and everything and I was a bit dubious as to whether with these the covers would fit this cover goes as for the cockpit area where we're going to access through to the um, to the battery and the receiver and the EEC um, so imagine how surprised I was when I offered the cover up okay and it fitted absolutely perfect you know, it's like a hair, um, if I zoom in on that, hopefully, I'll stay focused. Uh, you can see how, how nice that edge is. Um, 
and that you know it's, it's actually, I was absolutely thrilled when I saw that um, and again once the, the canopy goes on there uh, the canopy will be on that part there you can see uh, we're starting to see the, the, the hunter shape there so yeah the, that that canopy um, the whole way I designed the um, the flange yeah um, to seat the canopy that worked great um, the hatch for the server um, the two servers that are going to be um, for the elevator and the rudder um, this is the hatch just so we've got access to mess with those should we need um, and again that fits fine it needs a little bit of work on it um, doesn't fit quite as nicely as the um, the canopy hatch um, I think that's partly due to the to the fact that um, this part here the standoff is part of um, form is used to form this edge and because I had gaps and stuff in there these edges aren't as crisp and tidy as they are but I expect once the sides are glued together um, it's just a little bit of work um, just fine tuning and the, that that canopy that hatch there um, again would be like a seamless hatch um, and then finally we've got the hatch for the um, ducted fan at the back um, so this is how we're going to access the ducted fan at the back again this one I've actually broke this one uh, ages ago I'll get date on it let's have a look when I cast this 5th of the 8th last year so yeah a while back um, and this one seems a little bit too thick um, but you know it's not a you know it's plenty I mean in saying, in saying a little bit too thick it's not really it actually fits quite nice just seems a little bit proud it might just need a little bit fine tuning on the edges um, but like I say you know for the amount of work it's going to save making a hatch it's going to fit on there really nicely um, you know it's going to see it save a huge amount of time but again if they don't fit quite right I can do new molds only going to be small small molds for the, for those so it's not it's not really a drama